we started the momentum and uh, we have seen that uh, the momentum basically uh, is a property of an object that has a velocity any uh, force that is applied on this object is going to result into a change in the momentum we solved an example uh, where we calculated uh, the difference of the momentum due to the applied force by the bat on the baseball and we have seen how was that force resulted into a change in the in the momentum we'll continue today with a few examples and uh, an introduction to a new method of uh, solving in in the collisions in specific let's look at this example in this example we have a book that is sitting on a table for example weighs 1.2 kilograms if I apply a force of 12 Newton of tension on that book to lift it up for a period of three seconds what is the resulting change in momentum of the textbook so we need to see if this book is going to see any change in the momentum or not so before we do this it's it's important to know what are those forces uh, forces applied on this book in this case we have the the gravitational force so if I assume that this book is given by this mass so if this is FG and that's the tension force D equals to 12 Newton it's important to understand what are those forces that are being applied on that object so in this case if I am to calculate I know here for sure from applying uh, Newton's law for a stationary case I have I, I, I need to evaluate it so I know for sure from, Newt from Newton's law I can calculate Sigma F and find out if I have a net force applied or not so if I look at this object with those two forces and I calculate T for example T I know is a 12 Newton FG is M G which is M as 1.2 kilograms and G is almost 10 so FG is 12 Newton so both forces are equal and opposite in the direction which means that Sigma F is 0 which means that the book is not going to move so if the book is not going to move then I have the momentum first momentum zero and the second momentum after applying the force is also zero which means that the resulting change in momentum of the textbook is a zero So this is going to take me now to the introduction of the conservation of momentum. So in case I have a balanced forces, which means that the net forces applied on this object is zero, this means the momentum is not going to see any change. So if I have sigma f equals to zero, exactly like the same exactly like the case we we saw earlier if sigma f equals to zero this means that delta p is also zero 
what does this mean? This means that the momentum before equals to the momentum after, as we will see later on, when we have a change happening on a system. So in this case, we will call this conservation of momentum. If the forces are balanced, this means the momentum is not going to see any change. So when does this happen? It happens in the, in the collision. For example, if two objects A and B collide, this means due to Newton's third law, there will be a reaction due to the action that happened of object A colliding with object B. So I have a, a force AB. This is going to result into a force that and a reaction that is equal in magnitude, opposite in the direction. And that's why here, vector-wise, I'm calling FA, FAB equals to minus FBA. If that's the case, if those two forces are equal and opposite in the direction, this means I have a balanced forces. The sigma of the forces for my system is still zero. If the sigma of my forces is still zero, then I can say that delta, delta P is also zero. So I'm not going to see any change in momentum. What does this mean? This means that the momentum before the collision equals to the momentum after the collision due to those forces that exist at, at each object. So if I look at the momentum, the summation of the momentums before the collision as sigma P before, those should equal to the summation of the momentum after the collision, and this is what I'm calling sigma P after. Now let's look at this example. Things will be clearer once we start solving examples. Now in this example, I have a Christine's car is approaching a traffic light with a constant speed of 5.6 meter per second and a mass of 1.3 to the power of 3 kilograms. Tim's car is, a stop, is a stopped at the traffic light with a mass of 1.2 to the power of 3 kilograms. If a Christine bumps into Tim and their bumpers lock together, what is their velocity immediately after the collision? So if I am to solve for this problem, and I will be considering two scenarios or two scenarios here. One of them I'm calling before collision. And in this case, I have Tem scar here with a speed or velocity of zero. And I have a Christine's car here with a velocity I will be calling, if this is V1, this one is V2, and it is five point, this one is 5.6 uh, meter per second. And I will assume that my positive X is in this direction, going toward the, the west. So this is the, the west, the positive is the west, right? So this is the first, this is the before, before collision. After the collision, they are going to be as, they will be locked together, so both of them will be, this is, if this is M1, this is M2, if I call this one M1, and this one is M2, so I have here, M1 as 1.3, 1.3 to the power of 3 kilogram, 
I have M2, 1.2 to the power 3 kilograms, right? So in this case, once they, they are, you know, locked together, then we need to calculate the new velocity. So if this is, if this one this is stopped here and this one heading, it makes sense that the velocity would be in this direction, at least I'm gonna call this one V3. And now, in, in this case, I will be, count. this is the after, this is the after, I will be calculating now the sigma p before, right? So in this case, if I look at uh, p before, this equals to p1 plus p2, and I have p before as p1 we know that the velocity the, the momentum is mv right so if the velocity was zero here then p1 is zero then p2 for for christine would be m2 times v2 and i'm writing this as positive because it is in the positive direction so in this case P before equals to M2 as 1.2 power 3 times 5.6 and P before equals to 7,280 kilogram meter per second. Now P after is going to be both masses. So M1 plus M2 times V3, which I'm after. I want to calculate V3. Now here, due to the conservation of momentum, I have P before equals to P after, and in this case, I have 1.3 to the power 3 plus 1.2 to the power 3, V3 equals to 7,280, and in this case, V3 equals to 2.91 meter per second. If I am to write it as a vector, then V3 would be 2.91 meter per second and don't forget uh, the direction west now let's look at uh, at this example in th in this example we have uh, both cars are uh, driving with a with a constant velocity we have a Christie's car heading west uh, with a 5.6 meter per second. We have Thames car heading east with unknown velocity. And then what's gonna happen, they will uh, collide and uh, their bumpers will lock together after the collision and they will have a combined velocity of 2.4 meter per second east. So the the direction for the uh, for both cars will be going east. So if I am to solve for this problem, it will be first 
sketching the before. So this is the before where I have Tem going with unknown velocity. I have Christine coming with a velocity that is, I will call this one as a V1 that we don't know. This is V2 that is 5.6 meter per second. I have this one as uh, Christine's 1.3. So if this one is M1, this one is M2. I have M1, which is 10, 1.2, 10 to the power of 3 kilograms. I have Christine, 1.3, 10 to the power of 3 kilograms. And then once they collide, they become one mass. So if I take here the east as my positive, I could I could have taken it the other way around, but just for a change, let's take the east. So this is the east. This is my positive, and then both of them will go east with v three equals to two point four meter per per second. So this is. This is M1, this is M2. So I know that uh, P before equals to P after. So if I write the momentum for the before, sigma, sigma, before equals to, I have 10 going with a velocity positive. So I have M1, V1. I have minus M2, V2. Sigma P before equals to M1 is 1.2, 10 to the power of 3. V1 is unknown, minus 1.3, 10 to the power 3, V2 is 5.6, which means that the sigma P before equals to 1.2 to the power 3, V1 minus 7,000. 280. Now, what about the sigma P after? It equals to M1 plus M2 V3. Sigma P after equals to 2.5 to the power 3 times 2.5. Four, which means that the uh, sigma p after equals to six thousands from equating both. I have. 1.2 to the power 3 v1 minus 7280 equals to 6000 which means v1 equals to 11.1 .1 meter per second heading east now let's look at this 
uh, question here. It says a shopping cart moving north with a speed V collides with an identical station stationary shopping cart. There's two stick together after the collision. What is their velocity after colliding? So as simple as I have one car to the mass M going north with a velocity V positive that is north seeing another car with the mass M that is stationary so if this one is V1 then V2 is 0 so the sigma P before is this is M V plus zero sigma p after as they both collide together two m right v let me call it v2 so now the second scenario is when both collide m m they are going to go north for sure However, let's see how much. This is now V2, V2. So in this case, if V1 is V, by equating them, I have M, V equals to 2, M, V2. If M cancels, then V2 is half V. And the direction is going north. So I have answer being B. Last slide in this lecture. We have a, a firecracker of mass M explodes into two pieces. One piece has a mass of a quarter of the total mass, the second one would be the, the, the three quarters, moves, the first one moves to the left with a speed V. What is the velocity of the other piece, assuming the firecracker was at rest before exploding? Let's look at this problem. So we have the V4, we have a firecracker of mass M, the sitting uh, stationary, which means its velocity, we call this one P1, is zero. I have the after, the, the one quarter of the mass is moving in this direction with the velocity, and we call this one V2 equals to V. Definitely the remaining will go in this direction. The mass is 3 quarters m. So we have here v3 pick a positive direction. So let me, put, let me pick this direction to be the positive direction, which is I have the east as a positive direction here. So the momentum for the first one is definitely zero. The momentum, so here I have sigma P before, just a zero. Sigma P after equals two. I have this going in the negative direction. So it is one quarter of M minus, V plus three quarters of M times V3. By equating 
both sigma p before equals to sigma p after I have three quarter m v3 minus one quarter m v equals to zero. Now m is going to cancel, right? Quarter is going to cancel. This means v3 equals to v divided by 3. And the direction is positive, which means it is going east. So v3 as v over 3 meter per second east.